it's medicosis perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense another video about cardiac pharmacology today we have a mnemonic about niacin and lots of unfunny jokes and some words of wisdom it doesn't matter how smart you are until you stop and think mm, preach this is very similar to another professor who said just because you have a phd doesn't mean you can't be an sob so you're saying that getting a PhD is a bad idea? No, Catherine, I did not say that. Stop it. And by the way, SOB here stands for shorts of breath. Because I'm a good guy, I don't curse. I also gotta keep this channel advertiser friendly, man. Sometimes life can give you avocado, other times it can give you nuts. Maybe something bad happened in your life. You failed a test and broke up with your significant other. So you decided to take revenge. You went to a fast food restaurant and ordered 10 cheeseburgers because even though you're smart, you don't stop and think. Cheeseburgers are absolutely delicious, but they contain lots of fat. Fat is gonna enter your mouth, your GI tract, and then it's gonna be absorbed in your GI tract. It gets absorbed here. Remember my video about the lymph? I have another video about anatomy of the lymph node. I have a third video about the lymphatic system. I have several videos about lymphoma. Anyways, in this wall of the intestine, it gets absorbed into the epithelium of your GI tract, and then it gets packaged, not in mortgage-backed securities, not even in your stupid Amazon packages. It gets packaged in beautiful chylomicrons, and then they go to the interstitium, and then they go to the lymph capillaries, lymph vessels, and big veins, specifically the portal vein, because this is part of the portal venous system territory, not the systemic circulation. This is part of the portal, not the cable. Now portal circulation is going to end up in your liver. Your liver will synthesize some cholesterol. And now this is cholesterol in the liver. Do not confuse the cholesterol that's in the liver with your dietary cholesterol that was in that double cheeseburger. After your lovely liver literally plays with cholesterol, it's gonna secrete up the lipids into your venous circulation. This is the hepatic vein, part of the systemic cable system, not to be confused with the portal system. Okay, now it's in my bloodstream. In the bloodstream, we will convert that cholesterol. It's gonna reach that bloodstream as freaking VLDL. So now I'm in the bloodstream, I'm VLDL. What the flip is VLDL? Very low density lipoprotein. And then thanks to an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase, this VLDL will become IDL. And then after that, it becomes LDL. LDL has many choices, it can go back to the liver, it can go to the bloodstream, it can go to muscles, etc, etc. Or literally to any organ or any cell in your body. LDL is low-density lipoprotein, that's the ugly bad cholesterol. So HDL is the good cholesterol, LDL is the bad cholesterol. How do you remember it? H is the happy cholesterol, L is the lousy cholesterol. If you don't get rid of this LDL, or if the level of LDL rises in your blood, it can precipitate in the wall of your beautiful blood vessel and these are known as atherosclerotic plaques and these plaques are very dangerous because they can lead to heart attack if you're talking about your heart or strokes if you're talking about the brain and they come in different shapes and forms. In the heart we have something called angina which is ischemia and myocardial infarction which is an infarction. So here is the ischemia, here is the infarction. In your beautiful brain, it's different. The ischemia is called TIA, and the infarction is called the freaking stroke. And then, after eating bazillion cheeseburgers and french fries throughout your life, you may develop a heart attack at the age of 49. And then you will use a defense mechanism called rationalization, and another one known as projection, and say, McDonald's is killing me. Shut up, Jeffrey. You ordered 10 cheeseburgers with fries, and they are a restaurant. When you order 10 cheeseburgers from a restaurant, they're gonna give you your 10 freaking cheeseburgers. Duh. That's not their fault. Just own it, Jeffrey. Own it. I've done many stupid things in my life, too. Learn from your mistakes and try to lower your risk factors. Pointing fingers at others is not gonna lower your LDL by one iota. I mean by one milligrams per deciliter. By the way, what is the normal LDL level in the plasma? If you say less than 100, you are an astute and cute student. 
So these are the drugs that could lower your lipids. Statins, fibrates, cholestyramine, niacin, which is a hormone synthesis lipase inhibitor, ezetimibe, PCSK9 inhibitors, and bimpidoic acid, which was literally approved by the FDA last Friday. You know, stuff is happening. Do not expect to hear that from your pharmacology professor anytime soon. He hasn't opened a textbook like in 5 or 10 years or something. He has tenure. Why should he? And of course, if he hasn't opened a textbook recently, do not expect him to be subscribing to the New York Heart Association website and getting up-to-date information. So how did you hear about bumpedoic acid medicosis? I was reading a financial newspaper. <laughs> Life is weird. Like who reads the Wall Street Journal to learn about pharmacology? That will be me. That's who he is. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a video about pumpedoic acid. Niacin or nicotinic acid has two functions. One has nothing to do with the other. It could be vitamin B3, check out my playlist on biochemistry, or it could be an anti-hyperlipidemic drug. This happens at a lower dose and this one happens at a higher dose. It's like aspirin. At a lower dose, it's antiplatelet. At a higher dose, it's anti-inflammatory. How about moderate dose? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Here is how freaking niacin works. Back to our story about the double cheeseburger, remember? Here is your stomach and then an intestine gets absorbed and then the fat ends up in your liver. Your liver will use an enzyme called HMG-CoA and then it will produce cholesterol. This is called de novo cholesterol synthesis. By the way, there are many raw materials that help form this cholesterol, including the acetyl coenzyme A, that's why we call it HMG-CoA, and Mr. HDL, the good cholesterol, the high density lipoprotein, they will form cholesterol. And then cholesterol is going to end up in the bloodstream, and you know the story. VLDL, thanks to lipoprotein lipase, becomes IDL, intermediate density lipoprotein. Thanks to other stuff, it becomes LDL, the bad cholesterol, the low density lipoprotein. It gets oxidized, and now it's called oxidized LDL. This is really bad. Atherosclerotic plaques, boom, in your vessels. What is the fate of these lipids? Some of them go back to the liver, others precipitate to form atherosclerotic plaques, others go to be used by your fat cells and your muscle cells, specifically to be stored. So the fat's going to my fat tissue, my adipose tissue, which look like a signet ring, and it just stays there. And then there is a process called lipolysis. Let's say I want to break down this fat to produce energy, called free fatty acids. The enzyme responsible for lipolysis is known as hormone sensitive lipase and it produces free fatty acid. Niacin does two things. Number one, it inhibits the step. What's the name of the step? It's the conversion of cholesterol into VLDL. Now, cholesterol is not going to be converted into VLDL, so cholesterol is going to rise and anything upstream is going to rise, including your HDL, which is great because this is the good cholesterol. You want the good to go up, baby. Niacin has another beautiful function. It inhibits the hormone sensitive lipase. Now you will not break your fat cells into freaking free fatty acid in the bloodstream. So it inhibits lipolysis. Thank you so much, niacin. So niacin, it inhibits the VLDL synthesis by the liver. Absolutely true. Which will lower your LDL, lower your bad cholesterol, which is amazing. This, by the way, will increase your good cholesterol, which is equally amazing. It also inhibits the hormone sensitive lipase and therefore inhibits lipolysis and decrease the level of the free fatty acids in the bloodstream. Oh, why is like free fatty acid bad? Isn't that a source of energy? It's true, they are a source of energy. You know what else? If you combine them with glycerol, you get triglyceride, which is not cool. Because triglycerides are part of your total cholesterol. Total cholesterol equals the HDL good plus the LDL bad plus triglycerides over 5. Also bad. So triglycerides are bad, LDL is bad, and then HDL is good. You add them together, you get your total cholesterol. So if you have lots of these floating around and then they combine to cholesterol and then they give you triglycerides, the level of triglycerides in your plasma will go up, which is bad. And therefore, the level of the total cholesterol will go up in your plasma. And this is also bad. That's how niacin is freaking amazing. 
Hey, niacin, can you please speak for yourself? Yeah, my mechanism of action is to inhibit the VLDL synthesis by the liver. This will lower the LDL. That's amazing. I also happen to stimulate something called niacin receptor 1 or NIAC niacin receptor 1 or nicotinic related receptor. Uh, who cares? This is GI coupled. This will lower your cyclic AMP because this is what GI does. When you lower your cyclic AMP, it will inhibit the hormone synthesis lipase. This will lower your free fatty acids. Cool. It also increases increases adiponectin. Adiponectin happens to be anti-inflammatory. When we're talking about atherosclerotic disease, you know that atherosclerotic disease is kind of an inflammatory process. It's not just some physical lips clogging your vessel. That's not exactly true. It's an inflammatory process with macrophages, fibroblasts, and some nasty cells. Also, Mr. Niacin prevents the conversion of the HDL cholesterol into VLDL down the road. So therefore, HDL level will go up. HDL is the good cholesterol. That's amazing. Also, niacin inhibits the hepatic clearance of HDL. Therefore, HDL level will go up. That's awesome. What are the clinical uses of niacin? to increase your HDL and to lower your LDL. Niacin happens to be very good indeed in increasing your HDL. It's not the best to lower the LDL. Statin will kick its butt, not to mention PCSK9 inhibitors. These are very strong, yet so expensive. What are the side effects of freaking niacin? A lot indeed. Flushing, itching, paresthesia, pins and needles, and then hyperglycemia and hyperuricemia, which is bad if you have gout. Note. To increase compliance and decrease side effects, you should start with a small dose, then increase the dose. If you've done everything you should. Pharmacology is the queen of medicine, yet no one knows how to cherish that queen. If you're starting to fall in love with pharmacology for the first time in your life, check out my cardiac pharmacology course on my website. This lecture is just a sample of what you expect. How does niacin actually cause flushing? That's a long story, man. G-protein coupled receptor. It has seven parts, if you remember physiology or molecular biology or whatever. And then it's arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid has two pathways. Check out my video on the arachidonic acid the cyclooxygenase pathway and the lipooxygenase pathway. The lipooxygenase will make the life of asthma patients hell, but that's not the topic of today's video. The topic of today's video is the cyclooxygenase. It will produce the PGE2 and the PGD2. What is PG? Prostaglandin, baby. These prostaglandins will dilate the smooth muscles of your blood vessel. When you dilate the vessels in your face, you become like this, flushed, blushing. So you're saying that the niacin-induced flushing is prostaglandin-related? Yes, indeed, that's absolutely true. So how can you prevent flushing? Inhibit this freaking cyclooxygenase. Is there a drug that does such a thing? Yes, it's called aspirin, baby. Give aspirin 30 minutes before giving niacin. Aspirin will inhibit the cyclooxygenase. This will reduce the prostaglandin, which will reduce flushing. Mission accomplished. But which dose of aspirin should you give? Should you give the low dose, which is antiplatelet, or the high dose, which is anti-inflammatory? Prostaglandins are inflammatory freaking mediators. You give the aspirin at, at the high dose because it's anti-inflammatory and it's going to inhibit the cyclooxygenase and reduce the inflammatory mediator. So you give the aspirin 325 milligrams. This is in the United States. In the UK, it's a different number, but it's still a high freaking dose. All of this was just an introduction to the mnemonic. The mnemonic is about side effects of niacin. Niacin will cause flushing, itching, gout, slash hyperuricemia, hyperglycemia, and paresthesia. Here is an insulin pump. Okay, let me tell you more about flushing. Flushing of niacin happens in 80% of patients. It lasts between 10 minutes, even too many hours. Prostaglandin related. Therefore, the mast cells will secrete prostaglandins. Prostaglandin will dilate the smooth muscles of the blood vessel. You will end up with flushing. How to prevent it? Give aspirin. This is called prophylaxis. Aspirin 30 minutes before giving niacin. What dose of aspirin? The high dose, the 325, the anti-inflammatory dose. Some people argue that if you give niacin for a very long term, like chronically, the patient may reduce their flushing day by day, one by one. Okay, niacin and the H mnemonic. Niacin will decrease one H and increase another H. The H that's going to go down is the hormone sensitive lipase. That's the mechanism of action of the freaking niacin. 
The other age that's going to go up is your beautiful, good, cholesterol, high-density lipoprotein. Look at this beauty. Pharmacology is the beautiful queen of medicine. So here is the slide that talks about lipids. Can you talk to me about the mechanism of action of niacin? Of course I can. Niacin has two mechanisms. The first mechanism is to inhibit the formation or the synthesis of VLDL. Now VLDL is history and therefore the cholesterol is going to go slightly up. But then the good thing is that the HDL will also go the next mechanism is that it inhibits lipolysis. So lipolysis is not going to happen. Therefore, you will not break down your lipids and you will not release free fatty acids in the bloodstream. Question of the day. Which antihyperlipidemic drug lower LDL the most? For instance, is it statin? Is it niacin? Is it fibrate? Is it whatever called styramine? Which one lowers triglyceride the most? and which one raises HDL the most? Let me know the answers in the comment section. Also, this is what you get if you download my cardiac pharmacology course from my website. Go to medicosisperfectionalist.com to get this cardiac pharmacology course, which contains 50 videos, cases and questions with answers, of course, notes and mind maps. These notes that I'm drawing for these lectures, you get to download and then you can print and enjoy yourself. Medicine is fun. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 to get a 50% discount. This is limited for 20 students only. Only 20 are available. If you love these pharmacology videos, let me know in the comment section. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button to join the tribe. Also, smash like. You can support my channel here or here. Send me an email here. Get my cardiac pharmacology course here or my antibiotics course. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.